hey guys welcome to another tutorial today we are making this beautiful sweater I call it all season sweater because you can wear it year all year round it's a versatile pattern that can be dressed down with jeans and sneakers or dress pants and some sexy boots it has a written pattern you can purchase it on my website for more elaborate information it is also free on my blog the written pattern comes in extra small to 5xl so check out the link in the description below the pattern uses dk weight yarn or weight number three you will need four and three millimeter hook check out the yardage for different sizes if you follow the written pattern ss are you ready let's have some fun Okay, the materials we need are uh, weight 3 yarn. I'm using a, a trubo for this project. 4mm hook, a tape measure, locking stitch markers, and pair of scissors. Okay, now we're gonna begin our project. Okay, we are going to begin with our tutorial. We are going to start with our back panel back panel and for our pattern to work we need multiples of two okay so i am going to do to make a slip knot <coughs> excuse me we are going to do foundation chain but you are welcome to make just the normal <coughs> chain i just like this better it just gives a nice base to start your work so i chain one chain two and then insert hook on so just the <coughs> back loop pull up the loop and over pull up the loop and over and pull through the last loop so this is our first <clears throat> chain or foundation chain this time around you have to insert the hook at the v my yarn is not very visible the v at the bottom okay and then you pull up a loop yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through the two loops so we are we've done two so far this is one this is two i'm gonna show you one more time we're inserting the hook at the bottom through both loops it's very slow because my yarn splits a lot i'm gonna yarn through the first loop yarn over pull through the last loop so you're going to do this until you have all the chains you need which will be the half of your bust but what i did for me is i um i added three inches so my sweater will be a little bit wider than my normal 38 inches bust okay i'm gonna do one more time through both loops pull up a loop Okay, yarn over, pull through the first loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Okay, I'll meet you at the end of your chain. Mine is 104. Okay. All right, I have my 104 chains for my back panel now we are going to move on to our first row of the pattern okay i'm going to chain three and this counts as a stitch okay and then turn my work so this is considered the first stitch we are going to skip this stitch and then work half double crochet on the next one ok 
okay and then we are going back to the skip stitch and make half double crochet it's very simple it's a one row repeat we are going to do the same thing skip one stitch and then make double crochet half double crochet on one on the next stitch go back to the skipped stitch and make double crochet so we're making crossed double crochet stitches You are going to repeat this until end of the row. So if you have correct number of stitches, you should have one stitch remaining after you've done all your crossed double crochet stitches. So we are making a double crochet on the last stitch. Okay, and this is our first row. Row two, gonna chain three. Remember this counts as a stitch. Okay, and then turn work. Now, we are not making our stitches on top of each other. We are inserting um, our stitches here, okay? So I am going to make a double crochet. Just put it in between the stitches. And then we go back, do the same thing, double crochet. Repeat the same thing, just put it, put the stitch in the middle. Okay, so you are going to do this until end of the row. You will have one stitch left, which is this one. And then you are going to insert the hook right at the top of the first chain here to make your double crochet. Our last stitch goes right in here. Set the hook right at the top. And this is our row two. Okay. From now on, you are going to repeat this row. You are inserting the hook in between, remember? in here not on top of the stitch you'll be inserting your hooks like right in here between and you're still making crossed uh, double crochet stitches you are going to do this until you have your desired length my for my sweater i need 43 rows okay so i'll meet you guys after i'm done my back panel 
all right guys um my back panel is done i've already fastened off these are my 43 rows um supposed to measure about 17 inches long we'll see how it's about 70 yeah right on the spot okay just won't fit all in the on your screen so we are going to move on to the front panel now going to start the same way do foundation chain the same number of chains for that you did on this panel so you are going to do that until you have four rows left okay so i'll meet you guys for our next shaping in on the front panel Okay, we are coming towards the end of our front panel here. I know I said leave four rows, so work one more row so that you have three rows left and then we can make a neck opening. So make sure it's wide enough so that your head can go through. My neck opening is about eight and a half inches so decide how wide you want it to be i would say the wider it is the better so that you don't have to struggle putting your sweater through and then after that make sure you have equal amount of uh, stitches on either side okay so i have about 30 two stitches on this side so i'm going to have 32 stitches as well here so i have roughly 38 40 or 38 stitches for my neck opening i have already done the first row so i worked all my stitches and then worked one stitch just normal double crochet on the next stitch here so i am going to chain three which will be my first stitch for my second row and then work the same way so since i have 43 in total i'm going to have my neck opening with three stitches here Okay, so this is my first row, second row, and then we're gonna I'm gonna have the third row. Okay, I'm done with my three rows done with this side. Now I'm gonna move on this side. So since you've already figured out how to do this, you're gonna do the other side and uh, we will move on to our sleeve. Okay but first i want to leave a long enough tail for me to sew this to my back panel okay i'm just gonna estimate and just leave this much and then cut off my yarn and fasten off okay so you move on to the side join yarn work your three um three rows moving on to our sleeve and before we begin we are going to do a little math okay normally you have what is called a swash you make a sample 
of your stitch you want to make and then you have number of stitches across like a square like this so this is four inches or ten four inches or ten centimeters whichever uh, system you are using so under my square i have 20 stitches 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 so i have 20 stitches under four inches and then i also have rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay hope you are still with me now if you look closely at my uh, sleeve it starts narrow and gets wider so i'm going to put it like this when you wear it it's going to be this way so this is the wrist and this is the armpit side we're going to have two calculations the armpit depth you are going to measure yourself from the top of your shoulder to all the way down to your armpit okay and then you record it for myself it is 7.5 inches but it's only half of that so i need the whole circumference which makes it 15. all right and then my wrist circumference was 8.5 so from here to here is 8.5 okay and then you also have to decide on how long you want your sleeve to be i want mine to be 17 inches let me see if i can all right i want mine to be 17 inches next we have to make our calculations here i've already done my sleeve length um let's see if i can my sleeve length is 17 inches and that totals to 43 rows how i got to 43 rows is i did 17 times the 10 rows that we counted okay which gives us 170 and then we divide by the 4 inches or the 10 centimeters depending on what you use then i got 42.5 i'm just gonna round it up and have 43 rows okay next we are going to figure out how many stitches we need to start here before i forget the sleeve starts from the wrist all the way down to all the way up to the armpit and if you look closely it starts narrower gets wider wider and then you get one point where you just you just have straight edges so it's more like a a rectangle so normally from this distance to here is to your elbow and then from here all to your wrist will be like your forearm length okay and now we need to figure out how many stitches we need for for my wrist circumference i said mine is 8.5 okay 8.5 times the 20 stitches that we counted across okay 20 and that gives us no oh I lost the train of thought there so 8.5 times 20 it gives us 170 and then we divide it by our four inches from that square and we are going to have 42.5 but because we are working across remember our remember our pattern needs multiples of two so you can round it up to make it 43 and then add one to have 44 but mine i'm just going to stick with 42 so i'm gonna have to um my foundation chain needs 42 stitches okay moving on the armpit depth remember mine 
from bottom to top it was 7.5 and then i multiply it by 2 because it's like the, the front and the back and that's 15 so i'm gonna have 15 times the 20 stitches across okay that gives us 300 and then i'm going to divide it by 4 the same square that we are talking about and then i get 75 I can't have 75 because my pattern needs multiples of two so I'm just going to add one so I should end up with 76 stitches across so this should be this is 76 stitches okay okay remember what I said we are starting at the wrist and we are going all the way up and we keep widening our sleeve so you might ask when do i stop increasing um remember we had our 76 stitches which would be the total number of stitches i have for my armpit so this should be your guide whatever you are going to make keep increasing until you get the exact number for your armpit depth stitches okay and then from there you're still gonna count the rows mine ended up around 20 rows i think and then i had another 23 rows to go without increasing just as a rectangle which would be my like from my arm from armpit to my elbow so this would be that okay now we are going to start our sleeve okay i have my 42 stitches now we're gonna start with our first row gonna chain three remember this counts as a stitch what is happening okay so we are going to skip this stitch so this is the first stitch you are going to skip the second stitch and make a double crochet on the third stitch one double crochet go back to the skipped stitch and make another double crochet skip the next one and make a double crochet on the next stitch it's the same thing as we did for our panels we're gonna do this until the end of the row there should be one stitch left here and then you make a double crochet okay my first row is done next i'm going to show you how to make our increases so that our sleeve starts to get wider okay we are going to chain three all right and then in the same stitch make a double crochet so you are going to increase by one stitch each so you are going to do this and then make another two double crochet at the end here and we are going to continue with our pattern we're going to make our double crochet between our stitches okay gonna move back to the skipped stitch and make a double crochet Continue with this and we will meet at the end of the row. Okay. I have done my crossed double crochet. There's only one uh, stitch left. I'm going, sorry, I'm going to make two double crochet on the same stitch. Mm 
my first double crochet and my second so we have increased our second row with two stitches okay we are going to move on to the third row okay moving on to the third row we are going to chain three this is our first stitch okay so remember we had this extra stitch here we are going to do our cross double crochets in this single one okay we are going to make a first double crochet and then go back so we are going to wrap this one stitch with our crossed double crochet stitches okay so we have our first crossed stitch from the bottom single double crochet and we continue our normal crossed double crochet stitches I'll meet you at the end of the row okay we are going to do one more stitch here we are going to do our crossed stitches around this double crochet okay this is how we increase our sleeve so instead of having one now we're going to have two stitches and then you make a double crochet on the last one as usual so we've added another two stitches here so starting to get wider from here okay chain three and turn your work on the fourth row we are just going to work a normal stitch so we are not going to make any increases we are going to skip this one and then work between the stitches like we have been doing our second stitch on that gap again so the fourth row is not increasing it's just a normal stitch and you are going to work this until the end of the row after you work your crossed stitches you will have one stitch remaining and then you make a double crochet on it okay i am done with my fourth row i'm going to do one more increase with you and then i will explain to you how to continue to the end of your sleeve so i'm going to chain three and then turn my work we are going to repeat what we did on the second row we are going to make another double crochet on the very first stitch so we are, we are adding an extra stitch here and then work again the same pattern work between stitches to make crossed double crochet stitches we are left with one stitch we are going to do our next de increase sorry okay i'm gonna insert the hook in here this is my first double crochet and then work another one in the same from the same spot again we have increased with two stitches two extra stitches chain three and turn and we are going to work again our crossed stitches between this double crochet the one that we just did to increase 
okay we still work between the stitches we go in back and work so we have added another stitch you are going to do the same thing when you get here you make a cross double crochet around this stitch and then make your last double crochet in here so basically this is a three row repeat you make a normal stitch add one stitch on the second row add another one and then make a normal stitch okay All right, so this is our second decrease. So this will take it as a first row, second row, third row, which means we are going back to the first row, which means we are not going to do any increases. You're going to work normal stitches around, okay? Now, we are going to talk about when do you stop increasing. Remember we had two um calculations the one for the wrist and the one for the armpit depth so i need my stitches to be 76 which is my armpit depth this is my first sleeve so i repeated this three rows i kept counting how many stitches i have i went on and then when I got to here, that's when I had my 76 stitches, all right? But this is still not the length of my um, sleeve. My sleeve is 17 inches, which means I need 43 stitches. So after my increases, I'm just going to work normal stitches, which makes this rectangle until I get my desired length. And for me, it's 17 and it's 17 inches is 43 um, stitches. So that's how you figure out how or when you stop increasing. So you're going to keep going. If you have 80 stitches, for example, you're going to keep increasing until you have 80 stitches across. Then you start working 80 stitches in just a rectangle or in a straight um, row until you have your desired length. I'm not done with this sleeve, but I'm going to have 43 stitches because my sleeve length is 17 inches and 17 inches makes uh, 43 rows. So I'll meet you guys after you are done with two of your sleeves and then we go from there. The sleeve is done i left a long tail so that i attach this later to the front and the back panel we are going to move on to adding the ribbing here okay and i have switched to three millimeter hook for the body we used four millimeter hook i like to use the small one so that kind of snacks around my uh, my wrist okay i'm going to going to insert the hook and then attach the yarn i'm going to pull through secure the one side Okay, I'm going to chain 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
I'll, I'm going to skip the first chain and make a single crochet on the second chain. I'm going to do this until the end of the row. Just gonna hold this a little tighter and then make the last single crochet. So, all in all, I have 10 stitches here. All right, now I'm going to make slip stitch. So, this is this was on the first stitch here. I'm going to make a slip stitch on the second stitch. Okay. Slip stitch. Another slip stitch. Okay. And then turn our work. And we'll be working on single crochet again make sure you have the same number of stitches I should have 10 after this okay working on my 10th stitch I like to insert the hook on both of the loops for the edge to not to normally be straight and it would not leave leave a gap okay chain one and turn you are going to do a normal single crochet on the first stitch only and then single crochet on the back loop last single crochet and then make slip stitch in the next two stitches one the next one and turn your work with this you do not need to chain okay and then you move on to single crochet in the back loop I hope that makes sense because you are going to do this until the end of your panel and keep going back and forth back and forth make a you make slip stitch two slip stitch in succession here before you turn your work okay And I like to do my last single crochet and normal one. Chain one and turn. A normal single crochet. And then start single crochet in the back loop. Okay, 
Okay, let's make two slip stitches together one more time. Okay, the next slip stitch. Oh, my yarn splits a lot. Sorry about that. I had to fix that split problem. Okay, we are going to, so we've already done a slip stitch here. We're going to make our first slip stitch on the next one and then another slip stitch. Yeah, and then 10. And start working your single crochet in the back loop okay and this is how you get your ribbing you're gonna do that until end of the row all right so do that on both of your sleeves and we will meet back up here for the next part of the pattern we are going to seam our panels this is the front and uh, this is the back i have already uh, counted my stitches so that i have the same number of stitches from here to there so that they align perfectly i had left a uh, long tail here and this is what i'm going to use to sew um, up on my panels I have my yarn needle. I've already put my yarn into the eye. Next, we are going to seam our project. You are welcome to use um, whichever method works for you, okay? It is all up to you on that matter. I like to use this method because it just leaves everything seamless and it's invisible. You can hardly see anything once you tighten up your stitches. And it's like that both ways. Okay, so finish up sewing your shoulders and then we will meet up for the next part of uh, our pattern. Okay, our next step is to attach our sleeve to the front and the back. We are done with the seaming of the shoulder. So this is the front panel, this is the back panel, and this is our sleeve. Now, I have counted my stitches and then put and divided the number of my stitches by two. And that's my middle, that's why I put my stitch marker. So if you have 80 stitches, for example, then you should have um, the center of your sleeve at 20 stitches. And then you align your sleeve to that seam that we just did, sorry, for the shoulder. Okay, so I'm going to attach mine here so that it stays put. And then... We're going to seam along 
the front and the back panel depending on um which way you go all right i had a left a long tail from my sleeve so i'm using that if you forgot uh, get new yarn and attach it on both ends and uh okay i got my yarn on the eye the tapestry needle and i'm going to do the same thing that i did here okay when you work on the sides because it's not as definite as the ones that you have the v's here you have to really use your discretion and uh, space out where you insert your your yarn needle okay So I'm going to do this until the end of my sleeve and then you move on to the other side to do the same. I'm just spacing out my where I insert my yarn needle on this side but this side is much easier because we just insert into the V's that we already have Okay, I'll meet you guys up after we've you've sewn both of the sleeves on the panels. Okay. Okay, now that our shoulders are all seamed together, we are going to seam our sleeve. We're going to do the same thing as we did for our panels okay i had left a long tail when i finished my ribbing here so i'm just gonna go this way towards the armpit i'm using the mattress stitch but you are welcome to use whichever method works for you sorry my uh, camera is shaky
So I'm going to do this the entire length of my sleeve and then and then move on to the sides so this is the sleeve you're going to do the same thing as I'm gonna do seam the side of your sleeve and then to the sides all right I'll meet you guys after you are done both sides. Now that we are done sewing our panels together, we are moving on with the pattern. Our next um, stage into making this is we are going to add a hoodie. So it will be going around like this. First, you need to determine how many stitches you have for your neck opening. Okay. So this stitch marker here indicates the middle of my stitches here. So I'm going to end, sorry, I'm going to start here. And then after I work my first row, this would be my, my last stitch here. If you have an even number of stitches, like in here, you might leave just one stitch or two stitches a gap so that you are able to have your crossed stitches around equally okay because you have to remember we are working with multiples of two here all right so i'm going to insert my hook and join the yarn okay and i'm going to chain three Okay, chain three. So we are going to go around this way. Oh, before.